So, let's get this party started. Okay. I want to know the beginnings of where you came from. Like, how did you become a concept artist? Where did it all begin? I actually started at Stan Winston's in, uh, around uh, 2000. At that time, you know, I was there to help develop his animation program so we could kind of mix makeup effects and digital in one house and he loved that idea so we, we ended up getting uh, a few uh, computers with soft homage on them but I remember the first job I had when I started there was AI, it was Steven Spielberg's AI. Yeah. Nice, that's yeah. a good one to cut your teeth on. And he was like, you know, saying, you know what, why don't you just get on your computer and, and your animation program and design something there and I was like, that's weird because it would take me like weeks to just do one design and that's not and little did I know, he actually encouraged me to do something I, pro I probably would have figured out on my own, but I actually figured out like really cool techniques really quick, and, and there was no one really at that time using animation for design. And I remember that it was like the next day Stan came in and he goes, what'd you do? And I showed him like, you know, five different designs, and he was jumping up and down and saying, wow, this is, I've never seen anything like this. And I remember sending it to Steven, and Steven Spielberg was excited, because I think there was no one really thinking in that term at the time of using programs like that for designing, especially for characters. I think that was what was, was unique and new. Really, it's a whole new era of filmmaking. Yeah, working with Steven Spielberg and AI, there was a couple of characters that, that he wanted um, for these earlier robots that you could see through them in places. And he wanted a, a guy in a suit wearing you know, prosthetics and making it feel like you know this is the end of their skin, but I want to see through their head. And so doing things like that, that was where it was very effective. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Luckily for now, at least I found a niche that I, I fit into very well. But I think that that's the aspect of what I'm trying to do with the Ernst Company too, is grow and expand. Will it be? Will it have other aspects of it? Will it? Will I supply motion tests? That is another aspect of my company I've done in the past when I worked at Stands on War of the Worlds and Terminator 3. I actually played around with motion tests to figure out uh, would this character make sense before we commit to it. With War of the Worlds, it was uh, Steven Spielberg really loved the three legs, but he was confused, you know, thinking, will this look like he's, he's crippled? So the good thing when I was at Stan Winston's, we had a digital animator, so working with them to create the aliens walking solidified the design to, to uh, Steven that, wow, this is cool, this is what I want. What are the most challenging aspects of this whole, of the process? But a lot of times what's really, most, really difficult is to do something like the Hulk. This is something that's already been done. You know, we've seen it, and there's a fan base, and there's the comic books, there's everything. You're, you're having to stand up to something that people are going to look at and they're going to scrutinize because they wanted either the Grey Hulk or they wanted this Hulk from this comic book, or it should have been. And how do you merge all those and make it into something that makes everybody happy? And unfortunately, that's a difficult thing, and it's pretty much impossible. Pick it up with Noman. Tell me about that. Noman's a, a visual effects school. Uh, and um, they, they mainly train, they also train sculpting, drawing, design, visual effects for the industry. No one basically put these artists and me being one of them together to do a gallery of this hologram art. And it's, it's kind of interesting, it's great to be a part of that too because it's a, a, just almost the next level from digital. It's like now it's a hologram. That's so, really I did a, cool. so I did a character, it was called Thorn, and he's basically made of a ton of like thorny things that come out at you. So they very 3D, they go off into the distance. and. And so it's only at the beginning stages, who knows where it's going to be. It'd be great when the holograms are not just an image that, that you frame on the wall, but something that's in the middle of the room. It's amazing to see what just, you know, what's on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm always trying to be a part of that. Do you feel like that's key in your, uh, in your line of work, to be on the cutting edge? Oh, definitely. I think any, anything. I think you always have to be something different, new, and always change, and, and evolve with it. Yeah. You gotta have something new, you get bored with the old stuff. Yeah, and it gets spoiled too. Every time something new comes along, and it, it's harder for me to go back to clay or even, I have an oil painting I started at home and I can't even touch it because it's like, God, I, I just wish I could copy this and put it here and blend it and, <laughs> you know, that I could do in the computer. Advice to somebody who wants to fill Aaron Sims' shoes someday. This industry, and you, we've heard it all the time, it's who you know to get into the industry. And honestly, to be honest, there, there's a lot to be said about that because and I basically got in from a high school friend that was working on Elm Street 2, and that was my foot in the door. If I didn't know him, it would have been more difficult. Not to say that I couldn't get in, but I think that now with uh, websites, that's a good way to get your work out there for people to see it. You know, just, you know, I think anybody that has a dream, it's like, you know, just gotta pursue it, and you go, and I'm sure it will come true.